here with open arms. We know the times get hard, and we're here to help at North Point when you're feeling low. Thank you for tuning into North Point Making Help Happen. My name is Viftu Taka, and I'm your host. This is a new series brought to you by North Point Health and Wellness Center. We want to connect with you about topics in health and wellness that impact our community. We will feature guests from our team and around the community to talk about the health and wellness issues most important to North Minneapolis. Together with our guests, our community, and you, our listeners, we are partnering to create a healthier community. Today we are joined by Dr. Lolita King. Dr. King is a licensed clinical psychologist with more than 20 years of experience in promoting culturally responsive and evidence-based models of health and wellness for historically underserved communities. Her great passion is bringing healing to people who have been through traumatic and stressful experiences. When human beings experience trauma or severe life stressors, it is not uncommon for their lives to unravel. Dr. King perceives her role as helping clients develop healthy intrapersonal and interpersonal relationships so they can know themselves as peaceful, complete, whole, and safe. She currently divides her professional time between clinical practice, clinical supervision, professional training, and administrative duties. And we are really grateful to have Dr. King joining us today. Um, Welcome, Dr. King. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Um, And today we're going to talk about uh, the topic of recovery Um, and uh, Dr. King being a behavioral health provider um, has agreed to answer some questions for us. So we'll just dive right in and ask, what does it mean to be in recovery? So the term recovery can mean different things to different people, but most people agree that recovery consists of a decision that you've made. Um, and you are making progress um, in being healthy. And it even means um, for some that um, they are aware that they're not cured, um, but they are in the process. Um, Sometimes uh, another um, thing about the the term recovery is um, that it it is, correlated to the idea of being in remission. Um, So um, with that um, understanding, um, a lot of people will um, include the idea that relapse is clearly a possibility. Um, So as as we look at the term recovery, um, it it involves the um, understanding that a person is making progress, although they're not at the finish line. Um, another thing to consider when we're looking at the term recovery um, is that um, uh, there are some models uh, of uh, recovery, like the 12-step programs, that would indicate that all though um, a person may be abstinent from addictive behaviors, um, that they see themselves um, as doing recovery work um, throughout the lifetime. So with all that being said, recovery is um, mostly uh, agreed upon to me that a person is making progress. And can you tell us about the stages of recovery? Sure. Um, And and I want to point out uh, with regard to Mm -hmm. uh, these stages that um, uh, the the support of uh, staff and of the people in the recovery work um, typically use uh, what's called the change model. Mm -hmm. Um, And it can be utilized um, when you conceptualize any um, thing that you're thinking of doing differently or changing. Mm -hmm. Um, And within Uh, the change model of recovery, there are five steps. Um, And the first step um, is called pre-contemplation, pre-contemplation. So Mm -hmm. in this stage, um, the individual um, does not believe that they have a problem. Um, So if we're using um, addiction um, as uh, the area of concern, um, they um, may be in denial Um, And so there might be some continued use of uh, drugs and or alcohol in that stage. The second stage of change or recovery um, um, would be contemplation. And 
in this stage, the individual begins to have some awareness of how their use um, of drugs and or alcohol may be a, an issue. Um, they have the desire to change oftentimes too, but they may be unsure of how the change can take place. Um, and they may also, in some instances, tell themselves that someday they're going to change. So there's an awareness, um, they're looking at um, the behaviors, um, and so now they're um, uh, starting to get closer to what's uh, the um, third stage of the change model, which is preparation. Mm -hmm. And in this stage, uh, a person um, has acknowledged their addiction and they realize the pros and cons to getting help. And um, they also know that in their minds that recovery outweighs the cons. So they're saying, yeah, these are the good things about um, getting um, in recovery. And these are some of the things I might struggle with, mm -hmm. but recovery um, seems to be the better option for me. And so at this uh, preparation time or stage, um, a, a person uh, will take time to learn about what recovery may entail and their options for getting help. Um, some may also start to um, access some of the community resources, such as um, going to meetings um, uh, for support um, or checking themselves into um, a rehabilitation center. The fourth stage is titled action. And in the fourth stage of recovery, individuals take action um, and they, they're taking those actions that they may have been preparing for, um, whether it be a short period of time or a long period of time, but they're actively participating in some type of programs and services that will be essential to their recovery. Um, they're at this point willing to receive professional assist, assistance um, through um, um, maybe uh, behavioral health uh, for therapy. They may attend um, rehab, uh, whether it be outpatient or inpatient, and they get uh, the support that they need. Um, and at this stage of change, this is when um, it's typically more visible to others around them that mm -hmm. they're actually doing something about um, uh, their addictions. Um, and then the last uh, stage of the recovery model that most use is the maintenance and the act mm -hmm. of recovery. And um, in this uh, particular stage, um, there is a awareness and understanding of that person, their recovery doesn't end with action. Um, and so it's a commitment to mm -hmm. maintaining um, uh, the healthy behaviors um, and the tools that they've received um, from their um, recovery program. Um, but they also are aware that there will be more than likely relapse, but they use that um, as a um, indicator that they need to uh, re-implement and strengthen um, uh, their supports and tools around maintaining um, uh, abstinence and sobriety for longer periods of time until the, um, the risk of relapse it diminishes or mm -hmm. is extinguished, stops altogether. Thank you. Um, and so this is a bit of an open-ended question, but how long does it take to recover from addiction? Yes, that is a pretty open-ended question. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is that um, it depends, right? It varies. Um, the length of each stage of addiction recovery um, can vary widely depending upon the, the severity of one's addiction, the mm -hmm. types of substances used and the frequency mm -hmm. of use. So, um, you know, that's a, a real common question um, mm -hmm. um, uh, when uh, people come um, to seek services is how long is this gonna take? Um, and 
Um, so they're trying to um, get a, a sense of when, you know, when will this all be over? When will I be better? Um, and um, we educate um, uh, people that, you know, you have to learn and understand how treatment works, how the recovery is a lifelong process. Um, and um, uh, so there are different components to that. And so going back to the topic of recovery and a recovery journey, how would one start their recovery journey? So the first uh, step in the journey to recovery begins with a person's decision mm -hmm. that my life must improve, mm -hmm. right? So it starts with our decision first. We have to, to make that uh, a thought first and then mm -hmm. a choice. So we mm -hmm. have to make that decision. Nobody can make it for you. Um, there have been times when I've met with uh, uh, clients who will um, talk about um, uh, how the, their first attempts to get in recovery and stay in recovery were based on um, the requests um, from family, you know, or they were doing mm -hmm. it for someone else, but until they made the decision for themselves that life must improve for me, and here are the reasons why um, that recovery um, uh, wasn't maintained, um, mm -hmm. but they had better success when they made that decision um, for themselves. Um, and as part of that, um, in, ter in terms of making a decision to improve one's life, um, uh, there are things that uh, often um, a person looks at in terms of um, why I'm choosing. Um, oftentimes they look and they um, are starting to notice um, that their normal activities have suffered. So mm -hmm. um, maybe um, friendships, um, that might be um, romantic relationships, family relationships. Um, work, uh, you know, so that it's impacting their employment. So the financial um, security has been lost or has become more unstable. Mm -hmm. uh, might And that may lead to a whole number of different things as well in terms of housing instability. Um, it may come to there being some um, health problems associated or that have been amplified um, by mm -hmm. um, their use. So, um, that person chooses this because they look at the cons and the things that have um, been impacted and uh, that tells them that um, I need to um, start this journey. Um, what health factors should be considered when going into recovery? Well, I think that's a two part um, answer to this. Um, mm -hmm. uh, when a person is in addiction, um, oftentimes uh, there may have been some uh, health related problems that have come up for them. Um, so we might see a person who um, has uh, some lung um, issues um, that have come about um, through um, the use of different um, chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is an increased um, risk for those who um, uh, use tobacco. Um, mm -hmm. And oftentimes I've heard that tobacco use and uh, alcohol may go in hand, hand in hand, mm -hmm. or um, uh, there is um, a propensity for some people to smoke um, uh, opiates and things of that mm -hmm. nature. So there is an increased risk um, by doing um, some of um, the drugs and alcohol um, uh, to the extent of um, uh, it being an addiction. Uh, so then we have to look at, okay, how has um, the lungs been impacted? Um, those that are um, known to use um, uh, meth uh, have often uh, run across severe dental problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, obviously opiates can lead to overdose and death. Uh, some inhalants may uh, destroy nerve cells or brain cells. So those things need to be considered um, as possibly having occurred during the addiction phase. And so it is really important to, um, if you can, uh, go and get a, a full um, exam from your um, 
a medical provider mm -hmm. to just take an assessment of what is going on with the, the physical body. And then the second part to this is um, also the um, uh, the fact that um, oftentimes when people are in addiction that they um, will neglect or put off their health. So that these things may, uh, medical conditions may have already been present. Um, and uh, because the addiction has um, increased, that um, that was another area of life that has been neglected. And so um, it's really important to look at your overall health and how um, you might be able to address some things um, as you go into your recovery, because that's going to be um, a big factor in how um, uh, well and uh, you get um as you go into the maintenance phase as it comes to your mental and your physical health. So over, your overall health is important. Um, diet and exercise is important. So mm -hmm. um, all of those things need to be considered. Thank you. Um, tell us about a support network. What is that? So in the recovery process, uh, this is very um, vital and it's really encouraged among um, uh, persons in recovery because mm -hmm. uh, just as a human, um, we are uh, innately social creatures. Mm -hmm. And so social connectedness is important. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so there's a need for us to sh uh, be around others um, mm -hmm. that share our same goals and interests. So uh, being that we're social groups, um, uh, there is power in fellowship with other people mm -hmm. and people that have um, the uh, purpose of um, being on your team, uh, being in your corner. And so um, uh, it's good to identify what that support team will look like mm -hmm. and can look like. Um, sometimes in addiction, um, a person becomes more isolated from their natural support groups or their initial support groups like family mm -hmm. and friends and things of that nature. Um, but what can be included is anything um, that um, that person deems as beneficial. So that could be a therapist, it could mm -hmm. be um, uh, friends and family, um, especially those that um, don't drink or use. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a self-help group. Um, it can include your health care providers, so your doctor, um, a psychiatrist. So um, it's any other relationships that can help you meet your sobriety goals. The church, you know, mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it can uh, in, include a, a large number of different um, people in and um, entities. Thank you. Um, let's talk about um, who's most at risk for addiction and maybe tell us how having a marginalized or minority identity could affect who's most at risk for addiction. Sure. So who's most at risk? Um, if, if, we, if we took a look at um, purely from um, the research perspective, um, the, the simple answer is anyone can be at risk mm -hmm. for addiction. Mm -hmm. But we also know that there are some factors, um, some soci uh, social factors mm -hmm. um, that play a key role in um, who um, um, becomes addicted um, and uh, who is more likely um, to um, suffer um, across uh, the different areas um, that we deem as healthy. So mm -hmm. um, in terms of our physical health, our, be, um, our mental health, our spiritual health. Um, and, um, and so we have to look at who, who has less access to mm -hmm. um, good jobs, health care, um, to um, uh, uh, maintaining um, uh, uh, healthy uh, releases from stress. So it, we're looking at marginalized uh, communities and uh, minorities mm -hmm. when we were saying who's most at risk in reality. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're t and what we're talking about is um, 
these uh, social constructs and, and, and things that we need in order to be overall um, healthy, thriving human beings um, are often uh, cut off, diminished, um, uh, or uh, a person may uh, have distrust um, in those uh, that are providing services um, um, that would lead to improved and better health. And so uh, traditionally people of color um, and um, other minority communities uh, have um, been less likely to have access and be influenced by health equity. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some um, areas such as um, e income, um, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, um, the level of education um, that one uh, uh, has uh, access to and has uh, completed um, a job security, mm -hmm. um, working life conditions, food security, mm -hmm. um, housing, early childhood development, um, social inclusion and non-discrimination, um, affordable health care services that are uh, decent, at least decent, if not excellent mm -hmm. um, quality. Mm -hmm. um, those mm -hmm. are social determinants of health. So if a person um, does not have access to these areas um, or diminish access, um, then uh, we're going to see a possible increase in the prevalence um, and the severity of addictions in a community. Thank you. Um, and, the, and that brings me to my last question, and that is, what services does North Point offer for those who are seeking recovery support? Sure. Um, so there, I would say that we uh, offer um, uh, services in recovery in particular. Um, we can look to um, the behavioral health clinic. Mm -hmm. um, where we have individual therapy um, and the providers can lend um, support around chemical health. And, mm -hmm. um, and so that, and then would entail um, providing psychoeducation around um, the impact uh, and, uh, and processing um, the stage um, of change model. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, the providers can treat co-occurring um, conditions. So a person who is um, struggling with uh, addiction um, and mental health symptoms such as depression, anxiety, or and or trauma. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we also have uh, within um, the clinic, the harm reduction and testing services. Mm -hmm. And that program um, provide services to reduce the harm of drug use and prevent HIV and viral hepatitis infections mm -hmm. that sometimes go along with IV um, drug use. Um, and included within that program, we have overdose prevention training, mm -hmm. um, rapid HIV testing, rapid hepatitis C testing, um, naloxone kit distribution. So there's training and education around how to use um, that uh, to respond to someone who um, have, may have overdosed. Mm -hmm. We have um, fentanyl testing strips at no cost. Mm -hmm. um, we have sterile syringes at no cost. Um, there are containers um, for sharp um, instruments um, and safe disposal of needles. Mm -hmm. um, so with those are particularly um, honing in on uh, chemical uh, you, chemical or drug mm -hmm. use in and of mm -hmm. itself. Uh, we also have, um, and again, we talked about these other areas, um, uh, the services that would um, address um, your uh, physical needs. So we have the medical clinic, mm -hmm. um, and then we also have dental, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we also have um, social services that are in place mm -hmm. Um, that would assist a person um, with um, getting um, on a medical plan or a reduced cost um, for medical services, um, real, uh, referrals for a Rule 25 assessment so that it um, facilitates a person getting into um, a rehabilitation program. Um, 
trying to think of any other areas. Uh, there are more, but um, those come yeah. to mind as the, the, the basic ones. Oh, eye health, eye clinic, the eye clinic also. Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, and for more information, uh, folks can always go to our website uh, or call that number. Um, so I think that's everything I wanted to ask you. Thank you so much to uh, Dr. Lolita King uh, from our behavioral health department here at North Point Health and Wellness Center um, for talking with us uh, about recovery. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to North Point Making Health Happen. We want you to know that we are here to partner with you, that you can dream and that you can reach your dream. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch our show in video format. And if you like what you hear, share with a friend. To read more about North Point or find out more information about the COVID-19 vaccine, check us out on the web at northpointhealth.org. When you walk through the doors, we're here with open arms. We know the times get hard and we're here to help at North Point. Um, let's talk about some of those physiological effects. Um, tell me, do the body and the brain recover from uh, drug and alcohol abuse? So luckily, permanently quitting drug and alcohol use offers your brain a chance to recover and rebalance. Mm -hmm. um, continued substance use, particularly of alcohol, may lead to irreversible um neuron death and uh, overall shrinkage of the brain. So the anatomy of the whole brain um, can be impacted. Um, and so there can be some response and recovery. Uh, uh, and so again, that's another one of those, um, it depends and um, mm -hmm. of, there are a lot of factors that are involved in the recovery of the, the total body and the, the, and the brain when um, a person has um, a, a, a addiction to drugs or, and or alcohol. Um, so for some people, the brain can get healthier um, with abstinence of the drugs and alcohol. Um, but it may not fully recover back to the normal state, mm -hmm. um, but it will um, uh, help to uh, improve overall functioning. Um, and uh, the, the brain is so amazing that it can actually regenerate or create new pathways um, mm -hmm. for a person to improve the overall functioning of their brain. Um, and, and speaking of which, uh, my next question was about exercise. Can you tell us why that's important? Yes. Um, uh, well, exercise is important um, for all of us, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it is right. especially important um, in recovery because um, it exercise during a recovery helps a person to reintroduce healthy endorphins back into the body. Mm -hmm. Healthy endorphins. Right. And those are those natural endorphins that we have when we're exercising. And it, mm -hmm. it um, is very similar to what has been depleted and replaced by chemicals and alcohol. So we have people that when they're um, using um, substances talk about that high, you know, mm -hmm. and chasing that high. Well, the, the brain uh, naturally produces that when we um, exercise, we have physical activity. Um, and some people call it being in the zone, especially, you know, runners, people that jog and run, talk about that runner's high. And it's something that um, can um, be reintroduced and, <clears throat> excuse me, start to work um, uh, uh, well in, in the um, brain. Um, and so overall, a person is feeling better. Other benefits uh, to exercising is that those that reg um, regularly exercise um, uh, indicate that they um, have, have a significant reduction in stress mm -hmm. um, and uh, sleep better. Uh, that It improves your mood, um, increasing energy levels for people, um, and it builds up uh, uh, your immune system, 
um, so you have a stronger immune system um, when it comes to uh, those um, common uh, ailments that we get, like colds and mm -hmm. um, flus and uh, allergies, um, but it also protects us from more serious uh, conditions like um, cancer, stroke, heart disease, depression, um, diabetes. Um, so those are, are some benefits uh, to exercise. And it didn't, and for some, uh, those that, that uh, get into recovery um, and get great regular exercise, um, that regular mo movement um, is said to help prevent the return to the use of the alcohol and drugs. So the, um, there are a collection of studies that talk about that as well. Uh, so Dr. King, tell us about the role of meditation in the recovery process. Meditation is focusing and calming the mind. Mm -hmm. So it has a very important role in recovery from addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, so Because we know that during treatment, um, uh, people often have the experience of having uh, a what's called a roller coaster of emotions, right? So there might be some highs and lows. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, worries and fears about um, the future. Um, and uh, oftentimes there's uh, these fears of falling back um, uh, on um, you, uh, into use. And so um, meditation can help kind of calm and focus the mind. Mm -hmm. um, and it's beneficial to anyone, but um, again, particularly for those that are experiencing these emotional highs and lows that oftentimes come with re the recovery process. Um, and uh, uh, so, so, so some of those uh, problems, stressors, memories um, that um, a person might be trying to avoid um, with the use of drugs and alcohol sometimes can come back flooding in. And so... Mm -hmm. Um, as the mind and the body adjust to sobriety, um, those feelings of stress, anxiety, depression, anger, confusion, you name it, shame, all of those emotions um, um, that we all have um, and um, have uh, all, you know, found some ways to try to regulate. Um, for the person in recovery, they may not have um, as many um, tools under their belt, so to speak. But meditation is really great because you can do it anywhere. And mm -hmm. it, it could be uh, um, a um, simple um, um, exercise that takes uh, less than a minute, or it could be um, something that a person uh, does for um, a, a number of um, hours, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but it allows a person to kind of be in that non-judgmental, focused, calming state of mind. So it's it's very important, and um, um, the more a person is able to uh, utilize that as a tool in the recovery process, um, the better um, that they can reduce those feelings um, in the moment. And I alluded to this in your introduction, um, but you talk about the importance of cultural awareness and competency. So um, why should cultural awareness and competency be part of an individual's recovery plan? Uh, well, first of all, um, it should be um, a um, part of the agencies and clinics who are offering mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. recovery um, programs. Um, and so for an individual, they need to be aware of whether or not um, the missions and the values of that particular organization align with um, the ideas of um, that uh, uh, change is possible, that um, recovery is possible um, and that the services that are going to be provided um, acknowledge the client's cultural strengths, their values, their experiences, um, and they're responsive to those characteristics that are unique to that particular person and their culture. So um, if a person is looking for a recovery plan um, mm -hmm. that includes um, a clinic or agency, I would say they are aware of what's important to them as an individual, 
and um, what they value about themselves and their culture and their whole in, in the context from which um, they are coming to um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, coming to uh, get healthy and um, and and then the clinic needs to be responsive and be aware and be able to provide those services within that mm-hmm. context. And that, and and I could talk a little bit more. And and what does that mean exactly? That means mm-hmm. that the staff is aware of mm-hmm. the client's first language that they have. Um, uh, persons who can uh, provide interpretation um, services, mm-hmm. for example, if um, that is a, a person whose um, uh, uh, English is not their first language, mm-hmm. um, that the staff it has a sensitivity and an awareness of the nuances of the cultural um, uh, background of the person in the client's population. Um, that they uh, also have staff whose backgrounds represent um, those of the um, clients um, who are coming to seek recovery from their um, program. And that the, again, the treatment modalities also reflect the cultural val- uh, values uh, and the treatment needs of the client population. So it's it's all of those things. It's, it's them recognizing that there's a need, uh, that individuals that there's a need for this to take place and be a part of that process and that the um, programs that they are uh, choosing to be involved in uh, can um, not only uh, talk uh, about that, but that the, mm-hmm. the program actually um, is infused and it operates under those principles. Thank you. 